Hello everyone, I am your host, Elias Sarantopoulos, and on behalf of the Vectornator team, we welcome you to a brand new guided tutorial. Today we will explore perspective typography and how we can approach such a design project based on a 60s type of drawing. We will work inside the newest and refreshed version of Vectornator using tools and techniques as well as provide free vector art for your personal projects. So inside Vectornator 3, and the only thing that I have is just a new A4 document and with a background layer added to it. But first, let's talk about the project and what we will be creating. The idea started from creating a hippie type of graphic, then I drew this flat. Then I thought, how about if I draw this using a one-point perspective grid, which means there is only one vanishing point along a horizontal line. So in this case, maybe you can draw some lines depending the perspective you wish to have, and follow that, creating your own custom perspective topography. Then from that, I went to start coloring the shadows so inside Vectornator 3, we will try to imitate this as close as we can. So back on Vectornator now. Let's go ahead and first I'm going to tap on the BG layer to select it. Then I'm going to tap on the new layer icon. Tap on that. We have layer 1, so tap on that. And then up on the inspector bar, tap on the plus icon. That will be the library inspector. And from there on, just I'm going to bring in the sketch. Well, actually, if you just noticed, Vectornator already recognized the image layer and already named it to what it thought the content depicts. In this case, actually, it is a sketch. So that's great on uh, the Vectornator team here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to bring this down the opacity, like so. Okay, and then I'm going to lock this layer, so tap on the lock icon. There we go. So, in this case, we will focus on the second letter E, which is the, the one with the bigger size. And as for the rest, well, the process remains exactly the same to follow. All right, so let's go ahead and start this off. Now, before I start using any tool, a couple of things I want to set. So, I'm going to go up to the top left corner here. I'm going to tap on the Settings Inspector and under the Snapping Options, no need for Snap for Smart Guides or Snap to Guides. I want to be able to draw this freely without any constraints. And on the Inspector bar here under the Style, no need for Fill, just a stroke. For me, stroke width of one point will do fine. And then let's see, I'm going to tap on the sketch layer and then I'm going to tap on the new layer icon to create a new layer. So you want to tap what it says layer one. I'm going to rename this to letter E, hit enter return. And now I'm ready to actually start drawing. So I'm going to do a rough sketch here. I'm going to draw this uh, using the pen tool. So tap and drag. Tap and drag and continue this. Now I'm going to do this very rough. And then I'm going to spend some time on my own. Make sure this looks pretty good. But there are some key points that I would like to go over and talk about how I go about using um, creating these kind of designs. Okay, so first thing, the very first node, I'm going to start with the very first node I created with the uh, node selection tool. It's a very powerful tool inside Vectornator. I'm going to tap and drag this top node, okay? And then I'm going to tap one finger of the canvas because I want to move this independently from the other control handle, like so. Now you can release the other finger, just place it here, get a bit of a curve, and so on, okay? I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, I just want to show you a couple of things. 
Like for example, if you want to add another node, another point to the curve, with again, with the node selection tool, all you have to do is just tap once. There we go. And now we have a new point here. Very powerful. Very easy to use. Okay. All right. So what do I want to talk about? Well, the letter E, since it has been drawn on a perspective, it means it consists of different parts. Parts that they have common areas in between. So let's also focus on that and be able to have smooth paths without any gaps in between. So let me show you what I mean. So for example, this one is going to be a common node here. So I need to have those two. Um, here, this is another one. But in this case, I don't have one which means I'm going to create one here. There we go. All right. What else? Right there, I need another node. OK. Uh, in this case, maybe you don't need this one. You can just uh, up on the actions bar. You can tap on the trash icon to delete that. OK, I will be doing this a lot. So we have one. Well, in this case, I need one here, okay? So maybe I'm gonna add another point there, but we'll continue from there on. This is the common spot here. Okay, this is okay, this is okay. And do we have any other ones? Yes, we have that one over here. Okay, and we also have this place right there. I believe the rest to be okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on my own to refine this and make sure that everything is in place and the letter E looks very organic. So I finished drawing the front face of the letter E here. So let's go ahead and open up the letter E layer here. Here's the curve. Let's go ahead and copy that. So up on the actions bar, tap on the copy icon, and then tap on the paste icon. And now we have two identical ones. So just make sure this one is locked. And also I'm going to make it invisible. Okay. And I'm just going to work on that one. Okay. Actually, I'm going to focus on one of the other areas. So what I mean is this, I'm going to tap on the scissors tool and I'm going to tap on a one area, any area that I'm going to start cutting from. So I tap on that node. I'm going to tap on the actions bar, tap on the trash icon to delete that. And then with the node selection, just marquee select the nodes you don't want to have that we want to delete and then tap on the trash icon and continue this till you find exactly which area you want to focus. I'll delete that one and that one. And I'm left with this. Okay, so from here we want to continue again with the node selection tool. Tap on the first node and then tap on the pen tool and then tap on the first node again. And now we are ready to continue. Tap and drag. There we go. And then I'm just going to tap on the very last node to connect those two points. Okay, so this is crucial here. Tap on the node selection tool. Tap to select this node and then tap one finger of the canvas to move this node independently from the other node. So that's how we're going to work this. This is how I'm personally approaching these. So if I toggle on the visibility of the other, you see now we have a perfect smooth paths without any gaps. Okay. So let me do one more here. I'm going to again select that curve up on the actions bar, copy, paste that. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna make those both of them invisible. And let's pick another area. I'm gonna go for the one at the bottom. So again, tap on the scissors tool, tap on any point you want to delete, tap on the trash icon, and then marquee select with the node selection tool. And delete the nodes you're not gonna be using. I believe it's this one. There you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue from there. Tap on the using the node selection tool, tap on the node, tap on the pen tool, tap on the node again. Now we are ready to continue. So tap and drag. And tap once. Okay, let's fix that with the node selection tool. Tap and drag. There you go. Change the direction of the path. Just going to massage this a little bit. Something along those lines. Okay, so let's them all together. There we go. And now we don't have any intersecting um, paths or gaps in between. So when we color this, it's going to be, it's going to look great. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend actually a little time on my own. And when we get back, the whole letter E will be ready for us to go ahead and color it. So after spending some time, I was able to complete all the faces of the letter E. And now it's time to go ahead and color each of these uh, curves. Okay, so what I did is, um, I did a bit of research here in, uh, and look at the colors of the hippie era. So if you look at the bottom of my palette here, the last row, these are the colors that I found, more or less. So I'm going to just uh, add those inside the different curves. All right, so let's see. I'm going to make sure that nothing is un it's locked, actually. Everything's unlocked. There you go. So I'm going to tap on the front face here. Let's see. Um, let's make sure that we have a color, maybe for the, for the face, I'm going to use just that, but let's see. Things will change as we go along. Let me undo this. Then I'm going to tap on the curve. And this time I'm going to use a gradient, and actually a linear gradient. So we have two stops here. First stop, change it to yellow, and maybe on the other stop, tap on that, use this color. But in this case, I'm going to change the direction of the gradient so you can take those handles here and do something as such okay all right so let's look at this one what i can do is i can use the eyedropper sample that use the eyedropper And I'll have all of these using this color. Now, um, let's see. Let's look at the the front face. I can actually have also a gradient there, uh, a linear gradient. But of course, I need to change the color. So for the first stop, I will continue with this. But for the second stop, maybe I can go for that. And I can bring this a bit like so. Okay. This is totally a personal taste here. I'm just going to show you ways how to create such a letter and how you might color it using gradients, specifically linear gradients. So for the final step, let's go ahead and add some free vector art to our custom hippie typographical letter and make this mini project even more meaningful to its title. Now this free vector art, I'm um, including it inside the exercise folder, so you can go ahead and use it for your own projects. Okay, so having said that, I'm just going to close it up. So I'm going to tap on the X on the top left corner. I'm going to tap on the X again to close it up. I have already brought a couple of things, the butterfly and the flower. I'm just going to show you how uh, we do this inside Vectornator. I'm going to tap on the plus icon. I'm going to tap on the cloud. In this case, I'm using the Microsoft OneDrive, and I'm going to bring in the hibiscus. 
Here we go. Let's go ahead and open that up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the selection tool, marquee select everything, and under the arrange tab, just make sure that it's grouped. So it comes when it comes inside the letter or your project, you don't have a bunch of paths around. Okay. So I'm going to copy this up on the actions bar. I'm going to close it up and then back on the letter here. Just going to paste that. There we go. We don't need the sketch anymore. So this is one icon. Okay. Let's bring another one. Let's bring the butterfly. Just going to copy this again and then back to my project and just paste it. Tap one finger at the canvas to size this down proportionally, like so. And let's go ahead and bring one more. The flower, select everything, copy, close it up, and let's go ahead and paste that. There we go. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and place those. I mean, I don't have any specific plan here. I'm just putting things around. Perhaps we put this one over here. Size this down. Again, tap one finger on the canvas to size this down proportionally. And then, let's see. Um, let's go to the library inspector. And then I'm going to tap on the iconator and I'm going to type piece. Let's see what this yields. Well, this is what I want, the piece symbol. There we go. Just want to make sure that under the arrange tab, I group this symbol so I don't ac accidentally move the separate parts of it. And I'm going to size this down just a tad. There we go. And perhaps give it another color, like so. Okay. So here we go. This is the end of the tutorial. All you have to do is just play around with your own typography. And perhaps you can use some of these free vector art that I'm providing for you. And let us know if you have any questions. We would love to answer you and see what you've done. Thank you very much.